Hello, and welcome to the College Sports Corner, the show where we talk about anything and everything in the world of college athletics. I'm your host, Isaac Ray. And I'm Caitlin Edwards. We are excited to get into everything that happened this past weekend in college football and look ahead to next week and beyond. So Isaac, with week 10 in the books, who is your player of the week? My player of the week has to be Kieran Williams, running back out of Notre Dame. This man had an absolutely sensational game in the biggest game of the season by far for any team in the country. He had 23 carries, 140 yards, three touchdowns, including the game winner in double overtime in Notre Dame's huge, and I mean huge, upset win, 47-40 to over Clemson in South Bend. Absolutely wild game. So Kieran Williams scoring three touchdowns like that on a national scale, biggest game of the year, got to be my player of the week, Caitlin. What about you? I had Malik Willis, okay. quarterback for Liberty, which I know you're not a fan of Liberty, mm -hmm. but he mm -hmm. had a good game. He Threw did. for 217 yards, rushed for 108 yards for a total of four touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, as much as I don't like Liberty, my, my stance against Liberty has been very clear from the beginning. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'll be biased, and I'll call it out. But they might be the best team in Virginia right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, Virgi UVA, they don't really look that strong. I mean, Liberty literally just beat Virginia Tech. So I don't think it's a, a far claim to make the statement that Liberty, they, they're probably the best team in Virginia in college football right now. But... A lot of big games happened this, this past weekend. I already talked about one of them, Caitlin, but what were some of your takeaways from the weekend as we move forward? I know we talked about this a few shows earlier, but yeah. Michigan is still not looking good. Yeah. They are one for two, and they're playing 13th ranked Wisconsin this weekend, I believe. Yep. So they're going to have to win to get back on track. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we talked about that game last week with Indiana and Michigan. Michigan needing to win to kind of rebalance their season. Indiana needing to win to prove that they're legitimate. And Indiana went out and did that, and they won handedly. They kind of controlled the game from the get-go. So Indiana, for me, they've earned my respect. They're, they're legit. They still got big games left to go. They have big games against Ohio State and Wisconsin, so they got a lot of work left to do, but they earned my respect. But the biggest takeaway for me is Notre Dame is legit. I called them pretenders at the beginning of the season. You were on the ball. You called them contenders from the start, and i got to give you credit for that, Caitlin, because they went out and they won the game. Ian Book went on a national stage and showed that he's the man. You know, he's not the best quarterback in the country, but he showed up leading a 90-yard drive within the last couple minutes to tie the game, send it to overtime. And I know people are going to say Clemson didn't have Trevor Lawrence. No, Tre Clemson didn't have a defense worth anything. Do I think they could win a rematch in the ACC championship game? Yes, but that's if they get their defensive starters back, not if they get Trevor Lawrence back. Because DJ, uh, let me see if I can get this right, Uyunglele, I probably still butchered it a little bit, but I'm trying. He played well, but their defense was terrible. So that was my biggest takeaway from the mm -hmm. weekend. And Isaac, with that, there has been a lot of teams that have both met and surpassed expectations and those who have fallen short of theirs. So what teams are those for you, Isaac? Okay, so I'm going to start with my most disappointing teams that kind of have fallen short. And this hurts me to say because these two, these two teams are the two teams that I grew up rooting for as a kid. So the first one is Penn State. Losing to Indiana and then losing to Maryland? Yeah, at Penn State, it is unacceptable to lose to Maryland, let alone lose to Maryland at home. You're 0-3 on the season. You know, you lost to Ohio State. That's fine. You know, you can move past it. But they came into the season with huge, huge expectations to be, like, the biggest contender to uh, Ohio State in the Big Ten. And they're 0-3 now? After a loss at home against Maryland, they got to figure out something. This team just looks lost. They look like they have no identity. And I think you feel the same way, don't you? Yes, I had Penn State definitely not performing. They were ranked number eight in preseason. Yep. And now zero for three. Yep. And just losing home to Maryland, they should have never, never lost that's, to Maryland. It's unacceptable. You know, two Pennsylvanians here, we know the standard that Penn State football has. That is not meeting it. And then the other one, the team that is nearest and dearest to my heart, Georgia. Oof. It's bad. You know, if you would have said, you know, we're going to lose to Alabama, you know, okay, that's fine. But the way they've lost these games, the way they lost to Florida this past weekend, they were just outmatched in every way, shape, or form. I've never seen a team with so much talent perform so badly. They need a quarterback so bad. Stenson Bennett and Dewan Mathis looked terrible against Florida, and they need serious help. As a Georgia fan, I can honestly admit it looks like Mark Rick syndrome all over again. 
a lot of talent, but unable to win games, unable to find the guy that take him to that next level. But who was your second most disappointing team, Caitlin? Michigan, which I mentioned earlier, just sure. not performing one and two, and they really do have to beat Wisconsin to get back on track. Yeah, I would not be surprised. We talked about coaches on hot seats, you know, a couple weeks ago, or I think it may have been last week. Jim Harbaugh is on, I think, one of the hottest hot seats. I th I could see him getting fired by the end of the season, if mm -hmm. not, you know, earlier before that, because if he loses to Wisconsin this weekend. I think he's I think he's on his way out because there's no way you can justify that at Michigan. But with week 11 right around the corner, uh, what games stand out to you? I know there's not a huge yeah. slate of games. We kind of talked about this before the show off air. You know, what games really stand out for you? Obviously, you said not a lot of games, but to me, the Wisconsin and Michigan is going to be the most interesting just because yeah. of how I've been kind of coming at Michigan this whole yeah. episode. Yeah. They just need to perform in Wisconsin. They started out strong. They have Graham Mertz, really talented freshman quarterback, sure. and they were off for two weeks due to COVID. So yeah. they're coming back, hopefully strong. But yeah. Michigan has to come back. Stronger. Yeah, we'll see how Mertz performs in uh, you know coming back from COVID and everything. He was obviously one of the big names that they lost. And I'm actually going to backtrack a little bit, talking about teams that have surprised us in a good way. I got so caught up with being upset over Georgia, Penn State, I totally forgot about you know the positives. Uh, what teams have been some of the positive bright spots for you this year? Mine have been Indiana and Cincinnati. Okay. Just two teams surprising. In Indiana beating number eight at the time, Penn State. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't think you should be that surprised that Cincinnati's been good because I told, I said Cincinnati could be a team that could sneak into the playoff, and I still think they do, but they're going to need a lot, a lot of help. Indiana for me as well. Number, <laughs> ranked number 10 now. Indiana and football don't normally go together, so I think seeing them in the top 10, it's just weird. Like, it, it, that's the most 2020 thing ever that it's just so, so weird. Like I said earlier, they have big games against Wisconsin, Ohio State, and an undefeated Purdue, at least undefeated right now. Um, and then for me, the other team I had was Coastal Carolina, a team that was ranked or set to be finished dead last in the Big South, now 7-0, undefeated, number 15 in the country, a win over a Power 5 team in Kansas. Yes, it's Kansas, I roll, but you, they still went on the road and won. They have a win over a ranked Louisiana team with another shot at getting another ranked win on the road at Liberty. And their quarterback, um, Grayson McCall, doesn't have flashy numbers. He's only thrown for 1,300 yards so far this season, but he has 16 touchdowns and only one interception. And that shows when you have a quarterback that doesn't turn the ball over and is smart, you're going to have a chance to win games, and that is what they have been doing. Who's your second team? Did, you already said, what, what was your second team again? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Should have been a surprise. <laughs> I told you. I told everybody. Cincinnati. They are legit, and I really, really would love to see them play in the college football playoff, but they're probably only going to get a New Year's Six. Uh, going back to Game of the Weeks, though, you already told us yours. For me, I had Northwestern and Purdue. Again, this is just a weird sentence for me to say that the Game of the Week for me is number 23 Northwestern going on the road to West Lafayette to play Purdue in football. But it is, I think, uh, big implications in the Big Ten West, two undefeated teams in the Big Ten West, and if Northwestern can win or Purdue win, they set themselves up with a, a date with uh, Wisconsin to determine who will be going to Indianapolis later this year. But that's really all. There's no good games this weekend, though, Caitlin. Like, no. most of the games are just like, eh. So I would say don't worry about college football this weekend. Go watch the Masters on your Saturday. Tiger, DeChambeau, and company, I think it's going to be fun to watch the Masters in the fall. Augusta National will be beautiful, and it will probably be better than – 98% of the football games on TV on Saturday. But that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us on the College Sports Corner. Make sure to leave us a like and share us, and leave a comment on what you think about today's topics. We hope to see you next week, and until then, I'm Isaac Ray. And I'm Caitlin Edwards. Thanks for watching.